brothers and sisters, the Lord is with you. And also with you. We continue listening to God speak to us from the gospel and the tradition of Mark. Glory Glory to you, Lord. With the coming of evening that same day, Jesus said to the disciples, Let's go across to the other side of the lake. Leaving the crowd behind, they took Jesus in the boat in which he was sitting. And there were other boats with them. Then a fierce gale arose, and the waves were breaking into the boat, so much so that it was being swamped. But Jesus was in the stern, through it all, sound asleep on a cushion. They woke him and said, Teacher, it doesn't matter to you that we're not go that we're going to drown. Jesus woke up rebuked the wind and the sea and said hush be calm the wind dropped and all was perfectly still then Jesus said to the disciples why were you so frightened where was your faith they were filled with awe and they said to one another who is this that even the wind and the waves obey you this is the gospel, the good news of our salvation. Praise Praise Jesus, Lord Jesus Christ. By the words of the gospel, may our sins be blotted out. Amen. Probably something that we don't say often enough is thank you to our reader to our organist and to our very talented musical staff, to our altar servants, and to you. One of the things that, one of the good things that came about after the horrible year we had was that because we stream our mass on Sunday, we have reached an audience that we never could imagine we would. We have people from various parts of the United States. We have a person occasionally from Rome and from France that view the liturgy and that some of them support us financially. So this is one of the good things that came out of the horror of the pandemic. We listen today to, to God's word and got to remember, to begin with, the, uh, the, the, the boat that the apostles were in. These weren't farmers. These were fishermen. They understood the waters. They understood what a flimsy boat would happen to a boat. And what transpires, which we've heard, this is also something that I've mentioned to you before. If something is repeated in scripture, that means it's important. In three of the four gospels, there's this incident of Jesus calming the storm. Matthew, Mark, and Luke. And what they tell us is something that should be very obvious to understand. Technically, all of us are in the gospel today. We're all in the boat of life. And there are times when everything is calm, very still, and we're in charge. Yeah. Everything is good. And then the sea begins to churn. Somebody loses a job, there's a divorce, the relationship ends, somebody dies. <laughs> And it's 
Oh God, where are you? The thing that amazed the people in the boat was the manner in which Jesus was able to sleep <laughs> on a cushion, as Father Benny said once. <laughs> Jesus shows us the confidence that he had in God the Creator. He knew. He knew that God controlled the waters, as we heard in the first reading. When God tells Job, were you there when I did any of the of creation? And, and Jesus has this confidence and he lets his confidence come apart, come, come over the apostles. We're going to drown, don't you care? How many times have we said something like that? This morning in, when I was in the office uh, talking to Paul, I mentioned to him about the condition of my sister who is in a very tragic way. And my faith is being tested. This is a woman who did nothing in her life that was negligent. And for those of you who know about it, especially Dee Dee, who's known her a long time, and the brothers, and Paul, who cut her hair. And she's, last week when I went to see her, she's very well cared for. And she, they, she always has a blanket over her legs. Last week when I went and she was in the recliner, she had on top and shorts and no blanket. And it looked just like Auschwitz, skin and bone. And then we say, I say, what? There's, there's a reason for every test of faith. <coughs> every test of faith, they do. And some of you could get up here and do a better job of uh, talking about it. Just what you, some of you have gone through help one. You or your husband. What you've gone through. And it, there's got to be the why. And we're asked very simply to have confidence Is it easy to trust? We can go back, as we've mentioned many times before, to that young woman in Nazareth who was visited by the angel. And what the confusion. And she said, We hear of a tragedy at a local part of the city. We hear of a tragedy that happened 100 years ago in Tulsa, Oklahoma. <clears throat> and we pray and our confidence is in God, <clears throat> whose love is everlasting, whose love endures forever. And we've got to say these little many prayers throughout the day. What I just said was, was from a couple of the songs. And if you've got a, a good Bible, the beginning of the Psalms or the beginning of the Hebrew Scriptures, there's a listing of the Psalms. And there's basically a Psalm for every occasion. There are Psalms of praise, there are psalms of compassion. There are psalms dealing with hurt. And one of the things that really consoles me, 
and we share. I'll tell you exactly where I'm coming from. One of the things that really helps me is that Jesus read the same songs. This isn't anything new. These words weren't written in, in our lifetime. These words are thousands of years old. Sung by our Jewish brothers and sisters. Sung. And with great confidence they prayed. We have to have the same confidence. That no matter what transpires, God's in charge. Where is your faith? Why were you afraid? Pray for me as I pray for you. And may God bless us and keep us. May God's face shine upon us and give us peace. Now and over. Amen. Amen.